I'm Pastor Bill Wiggs here from the Sunfield and Greenwood United Methodist Churches in Southern Illinois, and with me today again is my wife, Becky. The crazy one is back. <laughs> well, last week, uh, in the middle of the week, instead of doing one of the song devotions like I promised, I instead inserted uh, our son-in-law's sermon uh, from his church at Luther's Chapel. And we're very proud of Mike. He's working hard. He's learning a lot. He's growing in his ministry, yes, but yes. that meant that we shorted you one song <laughs> devotion, <laughs> and so we decided to bring that to you, and today's a little unique, because I don't know if you have ever heard what we're about to sing. That's right. I hadn't. Had you? Mm, nope. We've been in the church forever. I spent a yeah. few years out of the church, but I grew up in the church. You grew up in the church. And we I had knew never... a lot of Sunday school oh, songs yeah, and Bible absolutely. school songs and... I'm surprised I did not know this. When I was a kid, I went to a lot of Bible schools. Mm -hmm. Never sang this. That's right. Well, at least part of it. True. Because we did sing part of it. I think everybody knows the chorus. That's right. They don't well, all know the chorus. I made up for it, but that's okay. That's true. But she's a little odd. So, you know. Very but anyway, where we found this... And I mean, I've looked in lots of hymnals before, never seen this, mm -hmm. is in that book that I've used the last two devotions that we talked about, Then Sings My Soul by Robert Morgan. Uh, great book. Uh, one, of, uh, one of the guys in our church here at Sunfield told me he has that book. It was a gift from a couple in our church. And so uh, this is just really inspiring to me. So we're going to sing for you a song you've probably never heard, at least all of it. So let's, uh, let's sing this together. Jesus calls the children dear, come to me and never fear, for I love the little children of the world. I will take you by the hand, lead you to the better land, for I love the little children of the world. Jesus loves the little children, all the children of the world. Red and yellow, black and white, they're precious in his sight. Jesus loves the little children of the world. Jesus is the shepherd true, and he'll always stand by you, for he loves the little children of the world. He's a savior great and strong, and he'll shield you from the wrong, for he loves the little children of the world. Jesus loves the little children, all the children of the world. Red and yellow, black and white, they are precious in his sight. Jesus loves the little children of the world. I am coming, Lord, to thee, and your soldier I will be, for you love the little children of the world. And your cross I'll always bear, and for you I'll do our dare, for you love the little children of the world. Jesus loves the little children, all the children of the world. Red and yellow, black and white, they are precious in his sight. Jesus loves the little children of the world. Did that surprise you? Had you heard those verses before? Never in my life. Me neither. Well, and that's exactly what the devotion out of this book says. It says, it starts out with, Let the little children come to me, and do not forbid them, for such is the kingdom of God. Luke eighteen sixteen. Of course, those are the words of Christ. The author says, Almost everyone knows Jesus loves the little children, but few of us have sung the three verses that go along with the chorus. Exactly. Very true. Nor do many people realize this was originally a Civil War ballad. Wow. George Frederick Root was born into a large family in Sheffield, Massachusetts in 1820 and showed signs of musical genius. By age 13, he boasted that he could play 13 different instruments. Wow. I can't even play one. Well, I can, um, I can play one. I can play the radio. I can play a radio pretty well. That's about and it. a CD player and a record yeah. player. But as far as actual musical instruments, good grief, no. You can play the shaky egg. I play a shaky egg pretty well. That's right. I do. Well, he goes on. As a young adult, he taught music in Boston, New York, and he also composed music and served as church organist. In 1855, he offered a song called Rosalie, the Prairie Flower, 
to his publisher for the hefty sum of $100. Hmm, 1855, $100 was probably quite a lot. That was a lot of money, yeah. Root's publisher, not thinking it worth that much, offered Root a royalty plan instead. In time, Root grossed thousands of dollars from Rosalie, <laughs> which helped establish him financially. That is just too funny. And it even publisher. Could, yeah, and it even rhymes there. That's true. Helped establish him financially. <laughs> the outbreak of Civil War deeply affected George, and he immediately began using his gifts to advance the Union war effort writing a host of patriotic songs to rally the morale of the North. As a serious classical composer, he was embarrassed at the simple martial music coming from his pen, so he signed them with the name Wurzel, the German word for root. Among his popular pieces was a ballad created Among his popular pieces was a ballad entitled Tramp Tramp Tramp. In the prison cell I sit, thinking, Mother dear of you, and our bright and happy home so far away. And the tears, they fill my eyes, spite of all that I can do, though I try to cheer my comrades and be gay. Tramp, 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 the boys are marching. Cheer up, comrades, they will come. And beneath the starry flag we shall breathe the air again of the free land in our own beloved home. That you didn't know that, that really shocked me. Yeah. Well, he says, after the Civil War, the melody remained popular, but the words were dated. A minister named Claire Herbert Woolston, a lyricist whom Root occasionally used, wrote new verses in a chorus, and that's how a Civil War ballad about a soldier in prison became one of the most popular children's choruses in history. I wonder what made them leave out the verses so where, to where we all know the chorus, but have never heard the verses. I have no idea, because it's really good. I've run across that with some other hymns That's and true. things that we sing in church. Mm -hmm. When I was growing up, we sang a lot of choruses mm -hmm. that actually had verses to them, but I didn't know it mm -hmm. until I came into the United Methodist Church, and then all y'all did was sing hymns. You know, now I love the hymns. We sang a lot of the choruses of beautiful hymns. Mm -hmm. Well, here's the case with this one. We've right. sang the chorus over and over again. Everybody knows it. Mm -hmm. And it is quite delightful to know that there are other verses and just to see the inspiration that the Lord gave. You know, when you think about it, understanding that this man was a union supporter, the union, not, not the trade unions, but the union government, the United States of America in the Civil War, you understand the, the words that end up down there, red and yellow, black and white, they are precious in his sight. Mm -hmm. In other words, everybody right. is made in the image of God. It doesn't matter the color of skin. That doesn't mean a thing. Thing, Jesus loves us because we are made in the image of God and he doesn't want one person to perish regardless of skin color or anything else. I loved when you did the children's sermon and talked about Purple Town and Green Town or Purpleville and Green Town, something like that. Yeah. And I made well, that up, was a long time ago. It was a very long time ago. Yeah. And I made up a different chorus. The line instead of red and yellow, black and white, I did pink or purple, green or blue, Jesus loves them. How about you? And that kind of took away the normal colors that people right. talk about and uh, the whole race issue because we made it silly colors instead of what people have come to expect. Well, and the point of those children's sermons was the fact that we were living in an area at the time that was rather prejudiced. Yes. And uh, they, they really thought that white people were better than anybody else. Mm -hmm. And so by not using the typical skin colors... We were able to get across a message to the children that they held on to. Right. And it was really great because just, oh, the school year that started after that, a black family moved into town. And that was the first for that community. It was. It was. And so it was really a, a wonderful thing and, and a lot of fun. She still sings that every once in a while just for the fun of it. Because I can. That's right. I'm silly. Well, we came across another version recently, didn't we? Mm -hmm. uh, I've been listening lately to a lot of stuff from Answers in Genesis. I actually subscribe to their channel now. That's Answers.tv. Mm -hmm. Some great Christian content there. Some good children's programs. Definitely. Oh, the Lord knows we don't have any good children's programming right now. They're ruining it all with a bunch of nonsense and stuff that's not good for our kids. On Answers.tv, there's some good stuff. But mm -hmm. the seminar I'd been watching for the last couple of weeks was One Blood, One Race. 
powerful. And Ken Ham, who's the founder of that ministry, had something really interesting to say, and it regarded this song. Becky's got it pulled up on her phone here, so she's going to read it to you. It's from Answers in Genesis website. And Ken Ham says, we aren't red and yellow, black and white. We're all brown. Everyone is brown. Some people are very light brown, others are very dark brown, mm -hmm. and others are in between. But everyone is a variation of the same basic color, brown. Now, there are other factors, such as fat in the skin, closeness of the blood vessels to the surface, and so on, that can give some differences, but that doesn't negate the fact that everyone is the same basic skin color. You see, each person has a brownish pigment in their skin called melanin. Right. While other pigments and factors are involved, melanin is the main pigment, pigment that gives each person their individual skin shade. And the amount of melanin a person produces is determined by their genetic makeup, inherited from their parents. Right. To put it simplistically, if a person has a small amount of melanin, they will have light brown, a light brown shade of skin. Mm -hmm. If a person has a lot of melanin, they will have a dark brown shade of skin. It's not a matter of black and white. Everyone is brown. Right. There's nobody that's red. No. I, I've never, well. Except after being out in the sun too Yeah, long. Joshua was a little bit red the other day. He was. Because he, he has very light skin, and we yeah. were out uh, doing a cleanup at our campsite, and uh, he got a little I red. A little yeah, red she does too. I just got deeper brown. I didn't get yeah. burnt at all. You know, that's just he the way it works. He turns brown, I turn, Joshua and I turn red. Yeah. But typically, very white. Right. Well, very light. Yes. But I'm the, not white. I'm light brown. That's right. Nobody's white. Nobody's black, really. True. Nobody is necessarily red. That's and true. I've never met a person that was yellow. I have seen Homer Simpson, though. I've seen some jaundiced babies. Jaundiced babies, yes. But that's not healthy. No. But what the author of the song was trying to get across was regardless of what category mm -hmm. you put people in, everyone's made in the image of God, and they are loved by Jesus Christ, and Very he died nice. for them. No one is better than another. The ground mm -hmm. is level at the foot of the cross. Very true. And so Ken Ham came up with a little bit difference to that chorus, and uh, Becky's got that there. Jesus loves the little children. All the children of the world, shades of brown from dark to light, they are precious in his sight. Jesus loves the little children of the world. I kind of like that. Yeah. That's pretty good. And we shades just have of to brown remember from dark to light. That's right. We just have to remember that because if anyone is prejudiced against someone because of the color of their skin, I'm just going to say it out flat here. No, no need to beat around the bush. Repent. Turn to God, mm -hmm. get your heart right, mm -hmm. and start loving people like Jesus do. Mm -hmm. If you do that, then you'll be living up to the call of God on your life. Yes. And I encourage you in that today. We do not live in a racist world. In fact, there is one race. There are a lot of people who hate each other because of the amount of melanin in their skin or because of where they came from because they didn't grow up where they, where they grew up. They didn't have the same amount of melanin. Same that is too. absolute foolishness, and it's straight from the pit of hell and smells like smoke. Yes. Simple as that. And I really believe that God wants us to come together regardless of melanin and yes. serve him and reach the world for Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. Do you know that some of the browner, the darker of our wonderful humanity in Africa, they're the ones where the gospel is spreading the fastest. Mm -hmm. They are on fire for the Lord, and it is wonderful to see. That's right. In fact, they're starting to send missionaries to us who at first sent missionaries to them. Mm -hmm. And praise be to God for it. May we have another great awakening, and may we realize that all are made in his image, and they are precious in his sight. Amen? Amen. Amen. Let's pray. God, we are so thankful that you have given us such a tremendous variety of color. Lord, we thank you for the various people groups that bring us such wonderful variety to the spice of life in food, in culture, in customs. We thank you, God, that you love all the children of the world. 
and that each and every one of us is made in your image. We ask, Lord, that more and more people, no matter where they are on the spectrum of brown, that they would come to know you, and by knowing you, know the joy of our salvation. Lord, for those who have chosen to be racist, as the term goes, although that's just another lie from the devil, there's one race, the one you created, the human race. Mm -hmm. Lord, we just pray right now that your Holy Spirit would convict them of that sin. For those, Lord, who try to use it as a way to divide our nation, Father, we ask that they would be rebuked right now in the name of Jesus. And instead, Lord, that everyone, would be treated, as Martin Luther King Jr. said, not on the basis of the color of their skin, but by the content of their character. Lord God, in all these things we are thankful, for you are a good God and you love us beyond all measure. Continue to bring your healing power upon our world. Continue, Lord, to give wisdom to those who are working to bring an end to the current crisis. And Lord, may your peace reign in everyone's heart. For it's in Jesus' precious name that we pray. Amen. Well, until tomorrow, my brothers and sisters in Christ, may the Lord bless you and keep you. May his face smile upon you and may he give you peace. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And always remember, shades of brown from dark to light, all are precious in his sight. Jesus loves the little children of the world. And that's you. Have a great rest of the day. God is faithful. Forever God is strong